Okay, so I've had this list ready for a while, and I've just been adding things that come in my head whenever I play Destiny 2. I don't know what I'm going to title this video because this video goes all over the place, but for the most part, I'm just listing problems that I personally have with the game. With the lack of content right now and the next DLC close to being revealed, I think it's finally time to make this video. Mainly because there's nothing else to make videos on in Destiny 2. I saw Mtash's video on the new Final Winter's Live Quest about the issues he's been having with the game. What he said was well received and pretty much everyone was agreeing with him. That kind of encouraged me to publish this video. So people might want to watch this without me getting bashed by anyone. Okay, so uh, as I was editing this video, uh, apparently Mtash made another video about issues he has with Destiny 2. And I looked at the dislikes and there's, there's quite a bit of dislikes. So if you clicked on this video just to dislike, uh, I highly recommend that you watch more of the video before you jump to conclusions because it's important. The main reason for this video is due to the recent rumors of the future of Destiny. A new content reveal is just around the corner and I'm pretty excited. Not for the actual content, I just want to get the hell out of Shadowkeep. There's many things going around like what the next DLC is going to be. I personally don't think there's going to be another season for Shadowkeep, but I could be wrong. Destiny 3 is completely out of the question because if they were to drop Destiny 3 this year, I'm pretty sure it's going to be rushed similar to Destiny 2 launch. And not to mention that next gen consoles are going to come out at the end of the year and Bungie typically releases content in September. So probably be best not to make a brand new game until after the new consoles were released. I really don't want another bus launch. In my opinion, that will kill the game for sure. But from the looks of it, there might be a chance that Destiny 3 won't ever happen. In one of the weekly Bungie updates, it says that they plan to create new armor sets for year 4, 5, and 6, which could potentially mean that Bungie plans to continue Destiny 2 for a few more years. And I'm completely against the idea of continuing Destiny 2 for the rest of the series. I'll explain why later in the video. But staying on Destiny 2 for more than another year will kill the game for me. For me, there's just too many problems with Destiny 2, and it's in need of a reset. And when I say reset, I mean this time without backtracking on all the improvements made with within the game, again. As much as I want to address all the problems with Destiny 2, I'd rather just focus on what bunch you can change and what I want most from the game. Make sure to comment down below anything you wanted to add into the game, or if you criticize anything I say, and I'll make sure to reply to anyone. It's okay to disagree with anything. Heck, you can even get mad at me for saying stuff. I'll still reply. I just wanna know what other people think. Before I start, I just want to state that I won't be mentioning anything to do with balancing or sandbox changes because I just gotta be honest with myself. What I want won't happen. By the looks of it, Bungie is satisfied with the current PvP meta because they leave it alone for months just for people to hate the game. I also won't be giving myself high expectations for Destiny 3 or whatever the next DLC is gonna be because it's clear that Bungie doesn't have the power to do anything crazy right now. So because of that, I'm not gonna mention anything crazy for this list. But there should at least be a standard that should be achieved for the next game. I'm not suggesting that the things I mentioned are part of that standard. These are just things I really want to see in the future that I feel like are possible. So for all the Bungie fanboys who support them regardless, if the next game doesn't have basic improvements, or if the next season has bad content, then I don't want to hear any of you slipping on that big Bungie dick. I really hope no one takes that seriously. I was joking, but since I already mentioned it, one of the things that is ruining Destiny right now is the community. They're always split between two sides, whether it's weapons, whether it's being positive about the game versus being negative about the game. There's always a difference in opinions on the game. There's people who constantly bash on Bungie, then go out of their way to send awful messages to the community managers, and that's just wrong. It's difficult to fix game issues and developers are stressing themselves out by working on the game. Not to mention that we're in the middle of a pandemic situation. There's something wrong with you if you have that mentality. And honestly, you need to fuck off. And then there's the people that overly support the game. These guys also need to kindly fuck off. Let me explain. There's a big difference in supporting a game, including the developers, and supporting the game and developer to the point where you feel like everything needs to be uber positive. This is especially noticeable on Twitter. Some people on Twitter overly defend the game for being in this state. You can't even critique the game anymore without being called toxic because so many people hate on the game while others hate on those hating the game. Here's a clip of my friend Nathan Sane explaining the entire community situation because I can't really say this better myself. By the way, make sure to go check out his channel, link in the description, make some top tier content. I like a lot of people in the community is just Sometimes people just get too hung up on the the overly positive and overly negative. Like, just meet in the middle. Like, it's okay to love the game, and it's okay to to critique the game. As long as you're not being toxic, like, overly, like, just be like, eat shit, die, bungee. Like, then what the, like, that's too much. That's too extreme. And then if you're overly fake positive, like, yeah, this is awesome. I love doing bounties 24-7. Good job, bungee. This is a fun community event. I love Seraph Towers then you can go fuck off too. <laughs> you're, you're in the same boat as the overly toxic. Recently, the community is just going at each other even more than before on Twitter. Some people get offended by the smallest things or block you for the dumbest reasons. Not to mention the whole teabagging is making players leave drama. Which if you do get offended by teabagging to the point where it makes you quit the game, then I don't know what to tell you. Even on my last video about Fall Winter's Lies, some people really thought I was applying the weapon was out, and some people got mad. When the video was clearly a joke towards the Fall Winter's Lie being glitched situation, it's just sad to see how bad the community has gotten. 
it's making me think that the game isn't for me anymore. Anyway, you can hate me for saying these things all you want, but I think that we can all agree that as Destiny fans, we all want the game to be the best game that can be. I just don't think Bungie is doing that currently. Anyway, let's get on with this wish list finally. Let's start off with the most important part of this wish list, the PvP side of the wish list. Because if you play Destiny 2 strictly for PvE, you're actually just bad at the game. And your opinion doesn't matter. Again, I'm not actually serious. I'm just trying to offend someone because it's literally that easy in this community. The reason why I'm starting off with PvP is because I personally don't have that big of a problem with PvE right now. For me, as long as there's replayable content with incentive, I think PvE is just fine. It's just that right now there's literally no content. But when it comes to something like a Grandmaster Nightfall, I'm not going to do that. There's there's literally no point for me to do that personally. And I'm a PvP main, so uh, I gotta start off with PvP because that's what I know more about. So let's get on with this wish list. The first thing I want from the future of Destiny is a new and improved game engine. I don't want Bungie to keep reusing the same engine since Destiny 1, which is apparently from 2007, and claiming that it's new. Come on guys, it's 2020. The world is evolving and has raised its standards. Forget the next Destiny 2 DLC because there's going to be almost a zero chance for that. If Destiny 3 does not have upgrades to things like FPS, tick rate, etc then the game is over. Destiny will officially become dead. This is why we need a brand new game, in my opinion. These changes won't happen with Destiny 2. I don't want to deal with the desync, the lag, the registration issues, and also the easy game mechanics at that. Like, I really don't want to deal with it anymore. Destiny 2 was also confirmed for next-gen consoles, which does kind of worry me, but maybe these problems will all be fixed then. The next thing I want from Destiny is a better game chat. No one in Destiny uses game chat. I'm not asking for better voice quality in team chat, but make it more useful. On top of that, you have to manually switch the team chat, which no one ever does. Not even freelance comp. I also like it if game chat was recordable, so I can actually record someone's voice for a video. This is just something I personally want because of all the funny moments I can make. I mean, there's a reason why almost no one in Destiny makes funny moments videos anymore. The next thing on the wish list is the better use of Crucible Labs. When they first bought Crucible Labs, I was so excited, but then when they brought it, it was just. They did nothing to it. It was literally the same game, same mode. What they should have did was use it to make actual changes and creative stuff. Similar to game modes like Mayhem, but experiment with them. What I wanted from Crystal Labs was similar to what they did with Uncharted 3. If you guys ever played the multiplayer, it's a really underrated multiplayer. It's so fun. But basically, they had a game mode called The Lab. It was just this different crazy stuff going on where you can have like infinite grenades, more damage, only using certain items. It was basically a custom public game mode that changed weekly. But in Destiny 2, they just wasted it. They could have used a Crucible Labs to experiment with game modes and the sandbox. With Crucible Labs, it really helps with sandbox updates. So they don't need to constantly make changes to the sandbox to make it fun, which they don't and they're probably not going to do. And at least now we can actually play test for Bungie because none of the shit works in the game anymore. So in my opinion, Crucible Labs will definitely help with PvP. The next thing on my wish list is for no more really good strong pvp pinnacle weapons this one is debatable but in my opinion pinnacle weapons don't belong for pvp or even pve at that they're just too good for the game and it creates balancing issues because you have no other reason to use anything else what i loved most about destiny 1 was the ability to use any weapon in pvp and still do good in destiny 2 you have to use the meta if you want to win or do well unless you're like a really top tier tryhard player you might have one game where you do good with a really bad weapon but that's one game out of the amount of times you'll try and by then you probably won't want to try anymore for those who disagree with this, I can see where you're coming from. PvP wouldn't have much incentive, and people don't want to lose the weapons they spent so much money, I mean time, grinding for. But weapons like that are too good for PvP and cause too many problems. As for rewards, there's definitely a lot Bungie can come up with. Maybe PvP exclusive end of match rewards like they did with Destiny 1, with weapons like Red Spectre and Isaluna. The rewards don't even need to be weapons. Ritual weapons are also a good method for PvP quests as well. Recently it was confirmed by Bungie that they were sunsetting old weapons, which I do like because I can still use whatever in PvP. But power enabled modes are more controlled and there's a chance for more balancement. So hopefully Bungie doesn't mess this up. On top of there being no pinnacle weapons, this would also reduce account recoveries for both PvE and PvP. This is controversial, but I do think they should do something about account recoveries. Now before you hate on me, listen up. I understand that people like recoveries. Those who do it can make a living off of it, and the people that buy the service don't want to actually do the work themselves. But Destiny is the only game I know where the number of account recoveries are this high. Nowadays there's literally no reason for someone to do something challenging themselves to get loot when you can just get a recove. Even on YouTube when I go to watch a Destiny video, all I see are advertisements regarding recoves for trials or doing the raid. I don't want to judge people's source of income, but people can't be ignorant about the issue. Because there's no point of playing if no one likes the content. What can Bungie do to restrict recoves? I have no clue. There's really not anything they can do because it's really a community issue. The Destiny community in general is a big reason to why I dislike the game in the first place. I know there's some good in the community because if there wasn't, I wouldn't be uploading Destiny right now. But overall, the community just sucks compared to what it used to be. But that's just my hot take, so let's move on. So next up, I'm going to talk about the general problems with Destiny. This isn't based on PvP or PvE, this is going to be just everything in general. So the next problem I'm going to be talking about is the mod system. I cannot stress this enough. I hate the mod system. 
I just hate almost everything about it. And I really hope Bungie changes it soon. I feel like there's always a cheat to the game because of this, making a lot of the content too easy. On top of that, most of the mods just ruin PvP. It just makes the game so easy to play when the game already takes no skill to begin with. When they first introduced the mod system, I feel like it was forced and they wanted to make weapons feel better, but I just don't like it. There's not really much I can say about it, I just want them to improve the mod system. Because right now, in my opinion, a lot of the mods just don't belong in the game. It's as if Bungie's trying to make Destiny into a game it's not. Because this mod system feels like they tried to copy Warframe. The next thing I want improved in the game is a new shader system. In my opinion, the Destiny 1 shader system is by far superior to the one in Destiny 2. Not to mention we're capped at a certain amount of space for shaders, and we barely get the chance to use any. Until now, I used to never use my shaders. Another thing that really bothered me was tying shaders to Eververse and endgame loot, and I just think that was one of the worst things for the game. Here you can see a fan-made shader system concept by Sammy Glitch. Uh, make sure to go check out his channel, link in the description for the full video. But basically he shows an idea to how to improve the shader system and I found it was really cool. The next thing I want improved in the game is to get rid of the seasonal pass content format. People may have different opinions on how content should come out for Destiny. Some people prefer small doses of content once in a while and I can understand that. But this seasonal pass format does not belong in Destiny. Like I said before, Bungie needs to stop making Destiny into something it's not. Making the game free to play in my opinion was a huge mistake and in my opinion it promotes less content production. A paid seasonal pass is not good content. An event that makes us compete to hand in bounties is not content. A new quest to complete 9 million Seraph Tower public events for no reason is not considered as content. Season of the Worthy is the perfect example of why this format doesn't work in Destiny. For someone who grinds new DLCs, it gets extremely boring to play after 2-3 to three weeks. This was the entire reason why I kept on taking long breaks from Destiny 2. And I don't want to take breaks from the game anymore because I miss out on content that's only available for that certain season. A lot of people say the Season of Dawn was a really good season, but I barely played it because 1. I didn't want to buy the Season Pass to get access to the free content. And two, I quit long before the season started so I didn't feel like returning to the game. To be honest, making the game quote unquote free to play was a bad decision. I felt like it was only used to draw on new players to the game, but it caused too many problems to begin with. First off, it's not free to play. The only content you can play for free is the old content that pretty much has no one says it to play anymore. No new player is going to want to play PvP because they're at such a huge disadvantage, even with skill based matchmaking. And it also made it easier to cheat in endgame PvP modes with zero worry about getting banned because the cheat system in Destiny 2 was garbage. And if they do get banned, they can just create a new account and easily level up to the minimum light level for trials and cheat again. On top of that, since it didn't start as free to play, I had to buy PlayStation Plus again just for Destiny 2. Because you can't play matchmaking modes without it, which is literally almost everything in Destiny 2. Not to mention that the next DLC is probably going to cost at least 40 bucks with a seasonal pass format, so I don't really consider it free to play. Another thing I want to improve from the game is the suspense of getting an exotic drop or legendary drops from certain activities. I miss the feeling of loading into the tower to create my engrams, hoping that there's something crazy. Nowadays, the feeling of getting rewards isn't there anymore, since exotics just drop from the ground and they're just pretty easy to obtain. Almost everyone already owns all the exotics in the game. Even if you don't have certain exotics, you can just get exotic engrams from Sir every week and around 4 every season that's guaranteed to get something new. Not to mention that all the new exotics these days are usually either from a quest, served as quote unquote content, or straight from the season pass. A big part of this is due to the lackluster loot pools for most activities, as well as the token system which is used for almost every vendor in the game. So hopefully Bungie can find a way to improve the loot system. Another general thing that I want added into the game is a theater mode. A theater mode will help with both PvP and PvE, and there's just so much usefulness from a theater mode. Like I said before, Destiny is lacking creative content right now, and a theater mode can help with that. It can be used to make Destiny montages and machinimas for people like Husky Raid, and it can help in PvP with all the cheaters. If you really think someone's using aimbot on PC, this would definitely help expose them for sure. There isn't any excuse to not have a theater mode in the game, because games like Fortnite, heck even Black Ops 2, a game from last gen console, 8 years ago I think, it's been a while, great game, had an amazing theater mode. And I'm pretty sure I'm not the only person who wants this added into the game, because recently a lot of people have been asking Bunch for this on Twitter, so maybe it'll finally happen. Now finally the last part of this video I'm going to be going over the PvE problems I have with the game. The biggest problem with PvE is the lack of content, but that's pretty obvious so I won't really be mentioning that. But that's not really something Bungie can improve, unless they have more resources. So I'm not going to be mentioning that, I'm going to be mentioning things besides the lack of content. Anyway, the first thing I'm going to mention is that they need to stop wasting powerful names. I'm going to be honest, I enjoy Destiny 1 PvE more than Destiny 2 PvE. And one of those reasons is that Destiny 1 raids like Vault of Glass, Crota Zen, King's Fall all had amazing storytelling. Crota and orcs were both huge names in the lore and the dlcs they were in revolved around them but in destiny 2 we fight random raid bosses we never hear about almost all of the raid bosses 
and they were just added in just because. I don't know who this Argos person is, but I'm just gonna kill him because, I don't know, he looks kinda evil. I can't even remember the name of the boss in Scourge of the Past. On top of that, the names we do know in the lore just get wasted on missions and strikes, removing any threat they had previously. I remember when we first heard the name Nocris in Destiny 1, I was certain he was gonna be a future raid boss due to how mysterious he was. And then Destiny 2 comes around and he gets wasted in a mission, then later turned into a strike. This is Crota's brother we're talking about, Oryx's son. The potential for his character was endless. Let me think, who else could have been better used in Destiny 2? Gaul, the guy who never lost and the first guy to steal our light, using it against us, was really just an easy mission if you have a full fire team. Zol, a damn worm god. The creatures who give the hive their power, easily bodied. He's fodder. I can go on all day. Even with regular people from the lore, I want to meet so many characters from the lore in Destiny 1 and Destiny 2. The lore will always be amazing and always be one of the best parts of the Destiny franchise, but I just want to see more of it implemented into the game. The next thing I hope for the game is the option for a proximity chat for destinations. This one's not really important, but I personally want to see it added in. If I'm exploring areas and I come across a blueberry in patrols, it would feel so much more fun. And it would be a good way to make friends too. Everything in Destiny 2 requires you to play with others, or else you're just missing out. Every time I play on Destiny 2 now, I find myself all alone with no one to play with. And it just discourages me to play the game entirely. And no, LFG is not an efficient way to make friends. The last thing I want from the future of Destiny is I wish they made more solo content. Destiny has always been a fire team based game. The game used to be a great way to make new friends online. As someone who has nobody to play the game with anymore, I'm tired of everything revolving around LFG. I know I have the option to start some activities solo, but these activities are meant to be played in a group, so you're only giving yourself a disadvantage by playing solo. The perfect example of solo content in Destiny 2 was the Last Word mission. When I returned to the game in Season of Opulence, I was behind on quests and wanted the last word. I remembered how challenging but fun the mission was, and the best part about it was that you can only do the mission solo, so there's no depending on your friends to carry you for a free exotic, you have to earn it. On top of that, not having anyone to play with in a team based game demotivates me from playing the game entirely. Anyway, that's pretty much all the key points I want from the game. I'm pretty sure I've missed a few things, but I pretty much covered the majority of what I wanted to talk about. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. Do you guys agree with me? Do you guys disagree? Please try not to be too toxic in the comments. This video isn't meant to disrespect Bungie. I just really wish the game was in a better place. Anyway, hope you guys enjoyed. If you guys stayed until the end, I really appreciate you. This is more of a serious topic and it was kind of long, but I just felt like I had to make this video. Anyway, see you guys next time.